I'm so stoked, I can hardly stand it. Yo, bear! And look, Medicine Grizzly Lake is that way. That's where you get the medicine for your grizzly. I hope we see a medicinal grizzly out here. A grizzly with medicinal properties. <laughs> Alright, 2.6 to triple divide pass. We are so rich! <laughs> Just imagine all the riches that lie ahead. Yeah, all these are good. I will try one. It's fresh bloobs. Bloobs! <laughs> Eating bear food. You can starve the bears out now. I know you had bloobs for breakfast. Yeah, I'm but... So we got Medicine Grizzly Lake. Katie, what else are some of your favorite like trail name, lake well, names, bitch, mountain bitch, names? Bitch, bitch, what was that? Yeah, Bitch Creek bitch and Creek. in the Tetons. And, and ho Dead Horse. Something. Dead Horse Pass. It was actually South Fork Bitch Creek, and not just regular Bitch Creek. <laughs> and of course, I always like like the Devil's Bathtub ones, like the Devil bathes here, you know. Ooh, Ooh. right. I'm not really getting the hang of these. I feel like I'm just using more arm muscle than I need to. They look pretty climbable. Look shaly. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, Scott's first fall summit. A lot of firsts for Scott on this trip. <laughs> what we'll... other lake? Oh yeah, Upper Medicine Grizzly Lake. Thank <sighs> you. 
<laughs> You're here too. Yeah, exactly. We made it. Triple divide pass. <laughs> Scott's first hike ever. Really? This is his first hike ever. He's never done a hike anywhere on any train ever. And he just made it up to Triple Divide Pass. There's just a touch of climbing on this. <laughs> Look at this newly minted beast standing on Triple Divide Pass. <laughs> well, every every time though, in the beginning, I think like, oh, I've got too much food. And then I get out here and I'm like, I should ration my food because I'm worried about, you know, running out like on a, such a long section, you know, eight days. And then, Isn't the only time you've ever run out of food? Yeah, but there's a difference between running out of food and being hungry for several days because I was rationing my food. I was still hungry. Like, I didn't run out, but it, I didn't eat as much as I would have had I had. So, Triple Divide Peak on this side it drains to the Atlantic Ocean, on this side to the Pacific Ocean, and on that side, Hudson Bay in the Arctic. Pretty significant landmark. Actually, two CDT hikers just came up through here and didn't even stop and uh, do anything. They just kind of walked right over and went down. So kind of, I don't know, kind of maybe worth stopping and taking it in a little bit. What do you guys think? It's like, it's like a gesture to him like, hey, this is pretty good. It's like, yeah, yeah. He, just, he didn't even look up and he just kept going. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole point of hiking, isn't it? To, to enjoy it. To enjoy it. Not to say you did it, but to enjoy it. What makes it blue anyway? The color of those lakes, they come from uh, all the minerals in the water. Okay. From like, you know, the melting snow and just whatever, the rock and stuff. It's just really rich in minerals and that's why it gets that deep turquoise blue color. I'll give it a little while. I'm gonna try and stay just conscious of it, you know? Right. And if it feels like it's getting like worse, then, then maybe. He's got to figure something out. How do your feet feel? Like as far as uh, blisters and that kind of thing? Well, that's what I'm saying, the bottom of my left foot, because I think I'm, I don't know, maybe doing more stuff with that because of my right knee. But right now it just feels like a little bit. What do you think about sitting right here for a minute? Sure. Wait, go underwater again. I gotta get one with you underwater. No, you weren't underwater. Oh, stop it. No one's gonna die. Yeah, we went through uh, quite a bit of this kind of stuff in the Bob Marshall Wilderness south of here last year. A lot of it was like visibly burned too, you know? Yeah. Like these are dead, but they were actually like charred and stuff. And you'd see trail signs that were burned. And Man, it's crazy how much this looks like the Bob to me. You can go ahead and uh, be the first man across the bridge and test her out. I bet she can do too. Do you want to test it? I bet we can do three, to be totally honest, but. Yeah, what is that? Like a 100 pound hiker, a 200 pound hiker? A... I'm sure MPS knows what they're talking about. They employ the finest bridge building engineers. I bet they borrowed from Yellowstone. Oh, that's right, they don't have bridges in Yellowstone. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't say 300 pounds, it says one hiker. I can see how two
So this is a, what is this, Red Eagle Lake? Yeah. Red Eagle Lake. We come to the head first, we're heading to the top. Yep, it's a tour of Red Eagle Lake. We're gonna go from head to foot. Camp at the foot. So this is the campground at uh, Red Eagle Lake at the foot. So it's uh, REF, according to the National Park Service map. Quite a bit of burned trees. This would be a lot more beautiful without the burned trees, but it's actually still pretty nice. Pretty okay, I guess. So are bears like super inactive like this time of night then? They're more active at night than during yeah. the day. Like when you're sleeping at night or like right now at night? Like this is probably their favorite time at night, to be honest. Like, early, you know, like dusk and dawn, you know, but also at night. Pretty much all the time. I mean, you know. Pretty much all the time. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're just 24 hour, 24 7 animals, you know. They don't sleep. They just, you know, they crave flesh. <laughs> you hikers. Your story. I used to take 800. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, like <laughs> um, 200 milligram doesn't sound. Yeah, I might do two if you're, yeah. No vitamin I. This is vitamin A for Advil. Yeah, that's another thing I forgot. So I forgot my ground tarp, my little scoop for my water, and I forgot something else. So. I don't know that I forgot anything yet. Is that recording? Maybe. Oh my gosh. You're so sneaky. <laughs> This is definitely the part of Glacier I guess you don't see people like taking pictures and videos of and talking about. So what did we hike through like 10 miles of uh, burned forest? I think it was about 10 miles and now we're at Lake Mary. So that's what, going to the Sun Road on the other side? So we need to get you a trail name. Huh? We need to get you a trail name. No. You could just be like a spicy nugget or something. <laughs> Red hat chicken. I could be hip spots. Hip freckles. Hip hip scabs. Whoa whoa. Yeah, well, Lil whoa whoa. Yeah, it's weird, it almost looks man made. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking of my head. Looks anything but normal. Or natural. Like why would you do that? I've got to be man made. Right? Man, we need to be over there. And not right here. Is that the one where people swim? No. Oh. No, we. This wasn't on the gut hook. These are thimbleberries. These are edible. It's 
It's nice and fresh. Yay. Hey, look, it's another trail camp. Reynolds Creek Campground. Look at this hiker cross this bridge with such grace and skill. I was filming this hike with my uh, GoPro and Evo SS gimbal, but the gimbal stopped gimbling. Basically the lights come on and it doesn't stabilize itself. So now I just kind of have to hold the GoPro. So from here on out, it's gonna be kind of crappy, shaky footage because this is not the first problem I've had with uh, this gimbal. So pretty disappointed in uh, an Evo. And now the gimbal's magically working again. At least for now. So I was huh. like, hey, I think an animal like 
Here comes Bloody Berry Fingers. <laughs> a new true. trail name in the making. <laughs> She's got a... Oh, it's right here, look at this. Here we have some huckleberries. See, that's, I love to huckle. Katie has a five bushel a day berry habit. Yeah, I think I'm up to three so far today. <laughs> three bushels? <laughs> <laughs> Couple quarts of berries a day. Buddy. I'm not really sure what that is. It's uh he was standing up and he's pretty tall. He might be a little short haired marmot. No, he's not like a marmot. He's more of like a ground squirrel kind of thing, he's don't you think? For a ground squirrel. Well, he is, but it might just be like some sort of yeah, glacier ground squirrel, you know? It's like my dog, he's eating cotton, it looks like. You're right, his cheeks aren't cute enough to be a marmot. Marmot. Yeah, I'm kinda of surprised we haven't already, but I mean, you normally see them like up on the passes and the boulders and stuff. So my Evo SS gimbal appears to be working again after about 75 attempts turning it on and off. Finally started working around lunch. I don't really know what to make of that, but uh, just glad it's working. Evo and I are gonna have a little chat when I get back and see what's up with that. But And it's uh, Pegan Pass where we're headed right now. We're gonna drop down to Many Glacier camp there tonight. Pegan Pass in all its glory. <laughs> That's a Wind River ain't shit right there. Coming up over a pass and just seeing like an impressive wall of mountains there. That is just wild. You guys should uh, come sit over here. It's, I think you should. It's Yeah, but you can't really say, I mean, I know you're having problems now, but you can't really say that in the future, under different circumstances, you wouldn't have this problem because we all kind of have knee problems occasionally, and it doesn't always, some people probably get them more than others. Um, I mean, I've had them, and then, you know, I've had many thousands of miles of hiking without it, so kind of hard to just say that every hike you do you'll have that problem but I totally get where you're coming from because if you had to put up with it every single time that it just wouldn't be enjoyable and I totally get that
Yo, bear! Man, just around every corner now, it's just like... Amazing scenery. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> you know, the reason I'm out here this year is to finish the CDT, see all the stuff I missed last year, as you may know. We got snowed out at the border, had to road walk around all of this, and uh, finished by myself in a blizzard at Port of Pigan. And uh, this is kind of my Redemption, you know, it's really been bugging me all year having uh, missed all this, you know, you put in all the hard work on the CDT for You know 165 days and then at the end, you know, you don't get that finish that uh, That really kept you motivated the whole time, you know finishing at uh, Waterton Lakes and just all of this So it's great to be back out here, but It just doesn't feel the same you know, just doing a section hike. It's weird. This is actually my first uh, first real hike, I guess, since I've done the CDT. I didn't do any hiking this summer. It just doesn't have the same feel of adventure as uh, the CDT did. Going from town to town and just being part of something a little bit larger. We did some outdoors and stuff, but not much, you know, growing up, I feel like. Well, you know, we didn't really do much outdoor stuff either when I was a kid. Camping for us was uh, Lakeport State Park, you know, in Port, um, Port Huron. Yeah, there's no separation between campsites. It was a paved um, road in the campground. Yeah. That's it. We never did a re any real camping. I kind of got into it when I lived in Florida, you know, and... Uh, we went to all those springs, you know, like Guinea Springs that we went to. Yeah. And then we just started walking all the trails that were along the springs because there was other springs that you could, you know, maybe smaller ones that you could check out like further down the trails. And I didn't do my first overnighter until 2010 in, uh, in the Ocala National Forest. And then uh, moved to Michigan and uh, did a couple here and then my big one in Texas. 2012 and that was kind of what kicked it all off so it's sort of a I got myself into it really not not my parents or my childhood yeah and it's kind of nice to see everything outside and just be in touch with the outdoors Huckleberry Katie Yeah, these horses really tear up the trail, don't they? It is. We gotta go take a left at this road. Are we gonna smart leg it? Look at this like high tech drinking fountain. Oh, it's got a water bottle. Uh, oh, hey, let's do it. That's actually pretty cool. Man, it better be cold. That one tastes okay. cold. You want me to hold it and you rinse your hands real quick first? Berry fingers are a thing of pride.
Welcome to Many Glacier. So many glacier. Yeah, a medicinal grizzly would be nice. Medicine grizzly. Five days and four nights. Yep. Dear Magic Box, tell me what I need to hike. How do I hike? We recommend a day pack with the following items. Oh, I got a day pack, an eight day pack. A hike lasting four to six hours. At least two liters of water is needed per person. Okay, can do. Weather can be very unpredictable. Weather, Dressing oh, what do we do with the weather? For sudden drops in temperature. Well, I've got layers. It is possible for rain or even snow to occur at any time while hiking in Glacier National Park. We recommend carrying a headlamp. Okay, a okay, okay. Kit. What about bears, though? I want to know about bears. Be aware of your surroundings at all time while hiking. Be aware if of you see a bear, maintain a safe distance of at least 100 yards. Avoid surprising bears. How many meters is that, noise. though? Conversation alone is not enough. Yield to bears traveling directly on or beside the trail. I will yield Step to all off bears. The trail and let bears pass at a safe distance. Okay, but what Should about other hazards? From November to May, it is possible to encounter snow hazards, all right, such well, as avalanches or snow bridges along the trail. Water are right. also <laughs> present. Stream crossing may be dangerous. So it's uh, day four, and unfortunately, uh, Scott had bail out due to pretty excruciating knee pain. This is his first ever hike, and he did uh, 50 miles in three days. So it's pretty impressive. Got to hand it to him for what he accomplished for a first timer. But uh, it's important to listen to your body, and he just felt this is the uh, best to bail out at Many Glaciers. So Katie and I are pushing on ahead and uh, modifying our plans a little bit to uh, accommodate for this change so basically plan is so scott's going to go back and get the rental car drive it into waterton canada i'm going to hike into waterton and meet scott and then scott and i are going to drive back to going to the sun road where katie will hike back from the border of canada she won't go into waterton she'll just reach the monument and then she'll hike back to going to the sun road where scott and i will be waiting with the rental car. So, quite a big change, but that's uh, what we're doing to kind of accommodate the, I guess the needs and wants of everybody in the group. We can all kind of make a bit of a compromise and kind of salvage the, uh, the trip, really. Dang, look at those mountains. So we're coming up in the uh, Ptarmigan Tunnel. This is a uh, I guess tunnel that goes through the mountain. And uh, instead of going up over a pass, the tunnel just goes straight through it. <laughs> Can't say I've ever really done that, but it should be interesting. So unfortunately I just got almost all the way up to the uh, top of uh, Ptarmigan Tunnel and realized a critical flaw in our plan. So unfortunately I'm going to have to bail back to Mini Glacier, meet back up with Scott, and uh, Katie's going to go on alone and uh, hopefully I can meet up with her tomorrow night at our next campsite, Stony Indian Pass, and still have her finish at Waterton. We're at the international border, U.S. and Canada, that chief mountain. That's uh, bear claw marks right there. Bear stands up, claws the tree. 
Yep, bear country. Yo, bear! So, Scott bailed out yesterday in uh, Many Glacier due to knee pain. And the plan was for him to pick, a, pick me up in Canada at Waterton. Katie was going to do a couple more days of hiking and uh, meet us at uh, going to the Sun Road. Either way, got to the top of Ptarmigan Tunnel yesterday and realized I still had the keys to the rental car. So there's no way Scott was going to be able to uh, pick us up. So I had to go back down to Many Glacier and meet up with Scott. Katie went on to Cosley Lakes Campground, which was our intended itinerary. And uh, yeah, then I hitched, uh, took three and a half hours to hitch from Many Glacier to St. Mary back down to Cutbank River Road where our rental car was parked. And uh, got the rental car last night. And uh, yeah, this morning Scott drove me up to Chief Mountain at the Belly River Trailhead. And uh, now I'm hiking through Belly River to Cosley Lakes and Stony Indian Pass where I'll meet up with Katie tonight and we'll both reach Waterton tomorrow. So, a lot has gone wrong in this trip, a lot more than uh, I have time to even mention, but uh, that's where we're currently at. So I'm hiking alone, Katie's hiking alone, Scott's alone today with the rental car, and we're all kind of doing our own things. Damn. Wow. All right, 2.6 to Cosley, 12 to Stony Indian, and Goat Haunt tomorrow. Gotta love that name, Goat Haunt. It's all these haunted goats. Goat Haunt. Okay. So heading down a little uh, side path here to Grovant Falls or Gross Venture. Some of you may remember in previous videos. Wow, look at that water. Now that is a big pile of shit. It's fairly soft, pretty fresh. It's uh, gotta be grizzly shit just by the size. I mean, that's, that's a big pile of shit. This is Cosley Lake and there's a campground about a half mile south. Pretty nice, pretty nice for a national park. So these are the shoes I finished the CDT in, Brooks Cascadia 13s. They had uh, about 900 miles on them when I hit the border of Canada last year. As you can see, this one's kind of on its last leg here. Um, I tried to duct tape it up. There's a bit of a hole here. I'm not going to move it because I don't want to aggravate the hole, but it's kind of starting to separate here. And uh, yeah, so I think it'll be kind of cool to just reach the border again at Waterton, the shoes I had last year. So when I finished the CDT last year at Porta Pigan, 
October 2nd in a snowstorm, a blizzard basically. Um, a bit hard to describe the feeling, you know, everybody thinks, and I thought, when you finish, I kind of had this expectation of just, you know, overwhelming joy and just accomplishment and just happiness and I didn't really, I didn't really feel any of that, to be honest. Um, I felt like I was just in a glass jar looking out at the world and just had no connection with it, completely disconnected from everything and everyone. And I don't know how much of that was due to the way I ended. Had I got the finish I wanted with Katie and Hopeful at Waterton Lake, you know, without all the snow, maybe things would be a bit different. We would have had that joyous celebration and maybe things would be different, but it didn't end that way. And uh, that's a big part of why I'm out here this year is to get that ending I wanted at Waterton and uh, see if I can bring a little bit of closure to the situation. People say you get post through hike depression and I wouldn't really call it depression. Uh, like I said, you just kind of feel disconnected from the world. I wouldn't say depressed, but anyways, I think uh, I think it's a really good thing to be to be doing and kind of get a second chance to end the CDT. And uh, maybe not everybody gets to do that, but uh, that's important to me. And uh, kind of moving on and uh, closing this chapter of my life, I guess. So. Another 24 hours from now, I should be at the border of Canada at Waterton Lake, and uh, really looking forward to that. Oh. All right, less than five miles to the pass. This is at Sina Lake, just below Stony Indian Pass. Absolutely gorgeous. So now the trail is gonna go up there and then around up there to Stony Indian Pass. That's uh, at Sino Lake, where I just came from. Glen Lake, Cosley Lake, that uh, last one. And then uh, it's about half, maybe half of what I did today, and the other half was out of sight. That's Stony Indian Pass right there. Almost there, a couple more uh, switchbacks.
So this is the uh, Stony Indian Pass campground, STO. Pretty nice actually. Right next to this lake, bit of a view. Yeah, no complaints. So we got 15.6 miles to Waterton. 2.6 down to water, uh, the Waterton Valley or whatever down here. And then it was five to goat haunt and then four to the border. Yeah. Oh, the bloobs. I mean, for real though. It's just too good. So we got what, 4.9 to Goat Haunt? I love that name, Goat Haunt. I still don't know what that means though, do you? Nothing. I just imagine all these like haunted goats roaming around, haunting people in this valley. The ghosts of all these goats that were killed by hunters years ago. Goat Haunt. It was like this branch is just begging me to sit on it. So, no luck for it, miss. Well, we just hiked a couple hours down from Stony Indian Pass Lake Campground, STO. We're at Goat Haunt now, which is basically abandoned. Katie, what did you say? Why did they close it down? The bathrooms? Too many people were crapping. And then they had to close the bathrooms or something. So then they closed the entire ranger station. And every all of these buildings here are just abandoned now. Eat lunch and then now we got, what, four and a half miles along the west side of Waterton Lake here. And the international boundary between the U.S. and Canada is basically just in the middle of the lake down there a couple of miles. And then it's another four mile walk into Waterton. Of course, it's got to be raining. You know, we came all the way out here to get... A little bit of redemption on ending our CDT hike in the snow last year and if now we get rain. Looks like they don't even have funding for the thermometer. <laughs> oh, maybe, no, I don't really see any uh, anything in there. They even had to scrap the mercury from the thermometer. The thermometer. Download the app for your phone that doesn't work out here. Hmm. Okay, so basically they lost funding to keep all these um, buildings open. There's an employee housing thing over here and some boarded up buildings and uh, there used to be shelters here where CDT hikers and non-CDT hikers I suppose could uh, basically reserve as a campsite. But uh, appears all that is just abandoned really. It's nice to be here while the uh, suspension bridges are still in place. If you didn't have somewhere to be like Canada, I've got a date with Waterton and a Canadian hot tub full of maple syrup. <laughs> Oh look, more bear crap. More bear crap. Been a lot of bear shit in this area. So we're about one mile south of the border. The final mile of the CDT. In the United States. In the United States. And then four more miles into Waterton. Or like 80 kilometers or whatever it said. <laughs> so that's a moose right there. It's women, he just got in the water at that point right there. And I guess he decided to go for a nice leisurely swim across the lake. Crazy bastard. This is the final river crossing on the CDT. We're like two tenths of a mile away from the border. Here it is. 
the U the US Canada border. I guess, yeah, it's kind of weird they have two, but. You can see the clear cut trees all the way on the other side. US, Canada. Wow. Oh, here's the finish I didn't get last year. It sure beats the uh, border patrol station at Port of Pigan. But it's not really the end. Only another four more four more miles into Canada, into Waterton. So Canada's got its own set of uh, caution signs that it's just basically been on every other tree since we entered. And then we got this gem right here. <laughs> Beware of uh, falling trees. Oh, oh no, it's gonna get me. Hey guys, I am back home from the hike now, as you can see. And some of you may be wondering, you know, how did it feel to reach the border? Was it, you know, what you thought, what, what you expected, what you wanted? Um, going back out there a second time and hiking Glacier and looking back on it I think yes and no I mean it was a great experience it was awesome I went with you know two great friends and yeah it was great um, but at the same time you know we did get the rain on the last day and everything and um, you know for whatever reason in my head I just kind of wanted to sit there at the border and just sort of lean up against that obelisk in the sun and just kind of relax and just sort of reflect on you know what you've done really and with the rain the way it was i mean it wasn't pouring or anything but you know we were already pretty soaked i didn't we didn't really feel like sitting around in the rain you know just we were ready to get to waterton at that point um that that took away from it a little bit but at the same time i think it really did give me the closure that i was out there looking for because i having come out there twice basically walking glacier twice and dealing with the crazy permit system twice you know i you know i don't want to do it again anytime soon um but i feel like i can kind of close the chapter on all that and cdt is done it's complete i'm not even thinking about it anymore i'm just thinking about the future and what i want to do now and may or may have not mentioned it in comments on prior videos but i'm working on a hike that's going to be 4,000 miles or so through Nevada, Eastern Oregon, Idaho, um, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, and Arizona. Uh, yeah, so it might be more than 4,000 miles, but um, a little bit of the trip I was out there doing uh, the Glacier National Park hike, I was actually on a much longer trip. It was uh, 35 days in total, and I was doing some scouting for this next hike and looking at places that um, I hadn't ever had my eyes on, other, you know, certain parts of the country I'd never been, but I've been looking at the maps all winter, all summer. I've got a couple hundred um, hours of just mapping alone in Caltapo creating this route. So um, that's what I'm working on now, and you'll be hearing a lot about that soon. Um, but when I get a little bit more information on everything, I'll definitely have some videos up and share that information with you because it's going to be... Uh, pretty, pretty awesome. So anyways, stay tuned and um, thanks for watching.